water purification for the backcountry removes three critical parts of backcountry water that can get us sick. So there's protozoas, which are really giardia, there's bacteria like E. coli, and then there's viruses like hepatitis A. The viruses are really more a concern when we leave North America. So think going outside of Canada and the US to more underdeveloped countries where sewage and water treatment aren't as good. Generally in North America, we really just have to worry about the protozoas and the bacterias. But water purification and the devices have become really popular for backcountry travelers. Like anything, there's pros and cons to all these different devices. And I just wanted to walk through some of those pros and cons so that we can decide the best tool and method for our next backcountry trip. Now, like I said, purification removes all three of the contaminants that we're really concerned about. And really, when we start talking about purification, the most popular is going to be UV light and the SteriPen in particular. So that uses UV light, takes about 90 seconds in it, and it purifies the water of all three contaminants. Um, the other one is tabs. So tabs or drops create chlorine dioxide. This is a chemical treatment used in say residential water treatments. You drop these in to a certain amount of water, you wait a set amount of time, and that will purify all three contaminants. And the last one is boiling, which is probably the most inconvenient. Now, when we start talking about UV light and the SteriPen, you turn this on, you do 90 seconds in one liter of water, and then that liter of water is ready to drink. The good thing about a UV uh, treatment or a SteriPen is it's really quick and convenient. The things I don't particularly like about the UV are one, this device runs on batteries or it has to be charged. So you have to figure that out so that it doesn't run out halfway through your trip. Secondly, it only treats one liter of water at a time. So if I don't bring a one liter bottle and I bring say a five liter bladder, I don't know how to put one liter in there and treat one liter and then add another liter and treat one liter. So you have to figure that out. So I strongly encourage people to bring a one liter bottle and this one liter bottle is gonna be the bottle that I purify and then I can pour that liter into a bladder or I can pour it into my hydration bladder. So you have to consider that. The other thing is a UV treatment does not filter out any contaminants. So if there's mud or silt or debris in the water, you're gonna to have to potentially pre-treat or pre-filter that water, say pour it through a bandana or have some other method planned if you don't wanna be chewing on your water. The other thing with dirty water is that when the particulate is floating around in there and you're using the UV to purify that water, that that debris refracts the light and it may not make the UV treatment um, as effective as completely clear water. So again, understanding your water source and where you think you're gonna get your water is going to drive the method that you use. When you're using tabs, you can certainly say, okay, I've got five liters of water, I'm gonna put X number of tabs or X number of drops in here. The problem with tabs is that to make sure that it's really purified, you have to give it the full four hour dwell time or wait time to use it. Now, I was on a hunt years ago in Alaska for doll sheep in the Chugach, and me and my buddy were going really, really light, and so all we brought was tabs. Um, actually didn't read the directions fully at the time. We were collecting water, we were dropping our tabs in, and 15 minutes later we were drinking it. Luckily we didn't get sick, but we were setting ourselves up potentially for failure because we did not understand um, how the, the tool that we brought was, was going to work to help protect us. So, uh, you know, tabs and drops are good. Sometimes it leaves a bit of a taste, and when you're using this method, it is not filtering out any debris, and that you have to wait, again, the four full four hour dwell time to make sure it's the most effective. Now, the last one is boiling, 
this is pretty inconvenient. Um, if you do boil or if I choose to boil, oftentimes it's in uh, a winter trip or a trip trending into winter. Um, if I'm using snow as a water source, I'm not really concerned about boiling the snow and decontaminating the snow, especially if it's just freshly fallen. If you're going to use a boiling method, you have to make sure that you factor in your fuel consumption. So you really have to know the stove and do a burn test to understand exactly how much fuel is gonna be required for the amount of water you think you're gonna to have to purify every day. Um, now, if you are gonna to boil to purify, you need to boil for one minute, so a rolling boil at one minute at 6,500 feet or 2,000 meters and below. If you're above 6,500 feet or 2,000 meters, then you should boil it for three minutes. So all this has to be factored in. But again, boiling is really not the most effective or efficient method. Whatever purification method you decide though, you need to figure out how you're going to get the water into the containers that you're carrying. I recommend if you're going to purify water with the methods that I just discussed, you bring a one liter bottle this one liter bottle is going to be the container that I purify all my water one liter at a time because that's the way most of these are, uh, are structured and then I can pour it into the bladder. But if you don't bring that, then you're really going to have to figure out and it's really not going to be very effective if I fill this with three liters and I have to start figuring out how many times I'm supposed to click the SteriPen to filter uh, three liters of water when that's really not the intention of this device. So understand the pros and cons, the strengths and weaknesses of everything is going to help keep us safe and healthy in the backcountry. Purification is a great method. It's not often needed, like I said, in North America. It's really more for those underdeveloped countries when we're trying to solve for all three of the contaminants, but it's become very popular because it's lightweight and easy to use.